You have all been loading models from files wrong this entire time. That's the dramatic way of saying that vertex buffers are amazing. Small warning, this video is going to be pretty advanced. It's also not going to be critical for doing things in 3D in Game Maker. It's just, it's just going to be about a few things that you may find to make your life easier. In particular, if you're not familiar with how buffers work, I would recommend becoming familiar with buffers. I made a few videos about those a few months ago. Let's get started. Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Dragonite, and welcome back to another video on 3D games and Game Maker. So the, uh, the more analytically minded of you may have, uh, may have made a connection between vertex buffers, based on their name, and regular buffers. I mentioned this briefly way at the beginning, but for the most part when I say the word vertex buffer I might as well be, uh, I might as well just be saying the word 3D model. And the reason that they're called vertex buffers is because that they're just, they're just that, they're buffers, they're a special type of buffer. If you've never used buffers in Game Maker before, they're just low level blobs of memory. They're like arrays except even simpler. Um, I made several videos on them back last year-ish, uh, if you want to go and watch those videos, if you want an explanation. And vertex buffers are usually used mainly for just drawing stuff, but you can use them as regular buffers as well. So I am going to, um, I'm going to find... Hey. Any 3D model besides the skybox. Um, phone, shut up. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the, this is the Going Merry pirate ship that has been popping in and out of these videos as needed. I'm going to load it in. And, again, IntelliSense, come on, there we go. There's nothing wrong with that line of code, Game Maker. I'm going to load it in. Again, links to videos on loading 3D model uh, files into Game Maker in the description and in the little card in the corner. And I'm going to jump on over to the draw event. And I'm going to, uh, let's draw the pirate ship in the middle of the room. I'm just going to copy this uh, instead of, let's go into the middle of the room. And let's uh, let's scale it up a little bit, and this should look okay. That's uh, that's upside down. Oh, oops. Okay, don't flip it upside down. Oh, you know what? Oh yeah, right. I was gonna say, why is why is my why does that suddenly look like it went through a paper shredder? Okay, it doesn't take a texture. So now there's a pirate ship in the middle of the room. Okay, this is a this is a vertex buffer, which is created by loading information out of an, an OBJ model file. And Game Maker has a collection of functions that are for going in between regular buffers and vertex buffers. Uh, for example, vertex create buffer from buffer, which will take a, a regular data buffer and convert it to a vertex buffer. And there is also buffer create create from vertex buffer. If you want to go the other way around, if you have a vertex buffer that you want to turn into a regular buffer. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make use of these. Let's see, let me go into key pressed, let's say, tab. I'm gonna press the tab key and I'm going to, um, I'm going to do some things. Firstly, let's say, vertex data is going to be buffer create from vertex buffer. And unfortunately, uh, you can't treat vertex buffers and regular buffers as one and the same. You do have to use these two functions to go between them, uh, but you will see that uh, internally, once I once I uh, once I convert a burf a vertex buffer to a regular buffer, they really are just one and the same. The data is all there. It's just um, a series of vertices with uh, position, normal, texture, color information, and anything else that you might want to define in the vertex format. Uh, the type buffer fix should be fine, right? And the alignment is one. There are very few situations where you would want to use an alignment besides one. So I'm not going to do anything else with this now. I guess as a as a formality because it's good practice. Because we are creating a new vertex buffer. Uh, we're making a copy of. We are creating a new regular buffer. We're making a copy of the vertex buffer and converting it into a regular one, and the, uh, the, the initial is going to be unchanged. Uh, so we do need to clean that up when we're done. This isn't going to quite do anything besides crash the game once it, once it loads in. 
Okay, it's actually not crashing the game. Is um is load OBJ not freezing the vertex buffer at the bottom? Okay, that's that's handy. I was going to say, uh, I have mentioned freezing vertex buffers. And this um freezing vertex buffers makes them slightly faster to draw, considerably faster to draw in some cases, but it also makes them read only. Uh, you can't add any more data to them after that. You can't even unfreeze them. And if I were to try and convert a frozen vertex buffer to a regular buffer, you would see that the error says can't create buffer from frozen vertex buffer. And that's a trade-off. There's a... Generally speaking, read-only things are faster to access than, uh, than, re than things you can read write to. Than things you can read or write to. And um, if you want to modify, if you want to potentially modify the vertex buffer afterwards, you will not want to have it frozen because then you won't be able to. Okay, so I talked about vertex formats before, and as I believe I said, the vertex format is just the type of data that, is, um, that comprises a vertex buffer and in what order. So you can see here, and this is mostly to do with shaders, but if you do want to do things involving, um, involving manipulation, uh, manipula sorry, involving manipulation of vertex buffers, uh, you will want to, um, you will also want to bear this in mind. So there's a 3D position, which is X, Y, and Z. It's three values, which in, uh, which in Game Maker is three 32 bit floating point values. Uh, so that's 12 bytes, bits, bytes. What's 12 times eight? It's 96 bits. Uh, then there's the normal, which is the same thing. They're uh, normals, normal vectors have an X, Y, Z component. They are also 32 bit um, floating point values. Uh, so that's another 12 bytes. Text chords. Those are X and Y texture coordinates also, again, 32-bit floating point values. That's another eight bytes. And the color, which is a single, uh, a single color value, which is a 32-bit integer. Or depending on how you want to look at it, a, uh, a series of four one-byte integers for red, green, blue, and transparency, or alpha. So knowing that, knowing how the data is arranged inside the vertex buffer, we can do something like for... Uh, I'm not going to plus plus. We can loop over the buffer. So instead of plus plusing, I'm saying i plus equals 36. Uh, 36 because there are, um, that's the number of bytes in a single vertex. 12 uh, bytes for position, 12 bytes for normal, 8 bytes for, um, 8 bytes for texture coordinates. That's 32 plus uh, another 4 for color is 36. And we can read data out of this. I'm going to buffer peak instead of read, I think. Uh, let's do this three times. And since we are buffer peaking instead of reading, we need to specify the offset ourselves. You can think of I, you can think of the loop counter as the, uh, the address in the buffer of the vertex. And oops, I plus four, I plus eight, I plus whatever is just the, uh, where each individual piece of data is stored relative to that. And then we can do things like print that information out. Like so, and this will print out the positions of every single vertex in the vertex buffer, and it's going to be a great big mess uh, because there are a lot of them. That did take a, that did take a fraction of a second to just to, to execute. And you can see the positions of every single um, of every single vertex in the vertex buffer. Uh, I don't know how many there are exactly. I would have to guess a, probably a thousand or so. That's not extremely useful, but it does show you that you can extract information back out of a vertex buffer. Uh, if you wanted to do it for normal and text scored and color also, you can do that, but I'm not going to because I don't want to bore you all. This is already a highly technical video. And what you can also do is you can manipulate these values. So if you wanted, you could change the data that's already in there. Uh, for example, if we want to... All right, this is extremely pointless, but it's also going to look funny. So if you want to, um, if you want to distort each vertex by a random amount every time you hit the tab key, uh, let's do a value between negative two and positive two. Uh, you could do that. 
set the index. And then you could, as I said before, vertex scrape buffer from buffer. Uh, what's the format? Oh, the format is uh, the vertex format, which I believe is just called vertex underscore format. So now when I hit the tab key, the going mirror is going to be mutated by a random amount. That looks really bad. It's still got the same general shape as the boat, but it also looks like there's something very wrong with my graphics card. Oh boy. It's like it's morphing into a chicken or something, I swear. All right, enough run for one day. Um, if you actually want to do that, don't forget to, uh, the original vertex buffer still exists and this is a memory leak, so you, you would want to vertex delete the old buffer so that you don't have a memory leak. If you want to, if you want to do any kind of special animations on a vertex buffer, you can do this. Uh, this will be slow because this is CPU programming. Uh, this is happening on, on the central processing unit and GameMaker is not the fastest language ever. If you want to do animations on a vertex buffer, uh, writing a shader for it is a much more efficient solution, especially for large models. Uh, but that is a very advanced topic that I am not qualified to talk about in any way, shape, or form. Uh, just know that this is not the optimal way to animate a model. What was I, where was I going with this? Okay, so if you want, uh, if you want nightmare fuel, you're, you're allowed to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to leave this here, but I'm going to comment it out so that anyone who wants to screw with this out, uh, on their own so that the code will still be in the, uh, in the project when I make it available for download. A much more useful thing to do with vertex buffers, I think, is saving and loading them. So in the past, I've I fanboyed about how fast it is to save and load buffers to the hard drive. Vertex buffers that have been converted to buffers, 3D models are no exception. Um, if I were to if I were to time this, this is a this is the get timer trick that I talked about a long time ago. Loading models like this, uh, this this alone shouldn't take too long. Um, let's see, that actually did that actually take more than a second just to load that one model? That's actually a really long time. Uh, you can imagine if you're making a, making an actual 3D game, you'd have do dozens, if not hundreds, of 3D models that you want to load from files. So if I were to do like, if I were to imagine, I have eight merry sized models that I want to load, or however many that is, I think that's seven. It is taking considerably longer to start up, and that took that took eight and a quarter seconds just to load those those pirate ships there. Uh, that's a long time. You probably don't want to have the player sitting on a loading screen for that long um, when they start the game, especially for a relatively small number of relatively simple models. So, going back to the vertex buffers as buffers theory, uh, you can also you can convert a vertex buffer to a regular buffer and you can save it. I'm going to just say, I'm going to give the, uh, the save file name that filter. If you don't know how get save file name works, don't worry about it. Uh, the file name is going to be actually, I'm sorry, that's how the filter works. All we're going to do is, uh, is save the vertex buffer to a file. The file extension itself doesn't matter. I'm just going to call it a .vbuff file so that you know what it is. Uh, let's hit the tab key and it's going to prompt us to save the model. Um, Mirror.vbuff is fine. This is my, uh, my workspace folder. If you were to go and open this up, you can see it's a, uh, here's the file. I will caution if you if you just call it something like VB or something, Windows may think this is a Visual Basic script, and again that won't have any effect on the data that's inside the file or how you can use it, but it may change the icon to some kind of Visual Basic like file icon, and it might be confusing. If I were to open this in a hex editor, do I not have any? Okay, we're gonna have to do this the long way. If I were to open this in a hex editor. Uh, you would see that it's a it's a blob of binary data. Woo, hacker man. I'm not going to get into reading blobs of binary data by eye because that will be extremely painful. Um, 
but what we can do is we can take that file. Where did it go? Here it is. Uh, we can take that file, load it into included files. And instead of loading the going merry from an OBJ, let's comment this out. We can load the model data from the buffer. And then, uh, since that is just a regular old, um, that is just a regular game maker buffer, we need to convert that into a, into a vertex buffer. So vertex creates buffer from buffer. We need to specify the vertex format so that the computer knows exactly um, how to uh, how to link the data inside to the shader when it's drawn. And we'll talk about shaders someday. Hopefully someday soon. Shaders are cool. Uh, we can then delete the original buffer. And we should be able to call it a day. So let's run the game. And I really hope that I did that all right on the first try. And indeed I did. If you look down in the console, it says the, the, uh, the amount of time it took to do that is 0 0.58 milliseconds. It was over one second before. So that's, that's almost 2,000 times faster. And you heard that right, 2,000 times faster than trying to parse an OBJ model file. Uh, if you do this, if you do this a hundred times for a hundred different models, or it will still take less than a second. So this is incredibly fast. So with that said, you might ask yourself, why would you even bother to load a model from an OBJ in the first place? And the reason for that is that OBJ is a plain text file that is nearly universal. Nearly every 3D model program will have support for uh, reading and saving to them. You could call it a standard. That makes it extremely easy when it comes to sharing files between people on your team, um, between the 3D modelers and the uh, whoever's in charge of putting them in, a in the actual game files. If you look at a game that's been shipped, you will almost, 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 almost never see um, just plain OBJ or even a binary format like FBX or something in the uh, floating around in the game's file system. And the reason for that is precisely this, because OBJ, Collada, those sort of things are good uh, intermediary formats. They're good for working with when you're developing your game, but they um, they leave a little bit to be desired when it comes to actually loading the data. Game engines like Unity and Unreal will have asset packers that take the 3D models in whatever format you give them, which could be OBJ, could be FBX, Collada, whatever and it will package them into a binary format that you can read quickly like this. For that matter, since I am insane, that's what I'm doing too with GameMaker. Uh, load models into the game data files in a common plain text format like GameMaker models or OBJ files, and then um, converting them into a binary format that is much faster for the game to load. All right. If I come back here, is there anything else I want to do with uh, with vertex buffers? The real exciting part is the speed at which you can load and save them, but uh, the other stuff such as reading the data out of them is, is interesting can be interesting as well. The main thing that I wanted to do with them was show how fast they can be to save and load, but uh, other stuff such as reading and even manipulating the data inside them directly is interesting as well. Hmm. I could say... I could vertex freeze the going merry after it's loaded from the vertex buffer as well, but then you'd be back to the problem where if you hit the tab key after that, it would crash because it's frozen. I won't do that for the, uh, there's the old error message. I won't do that for this, uh, this tutorial file. Nope, go away. I'm going to stop talking now. I, I know I said a little while ago that I was probably going to be doing collisions soon, 3D collisions, but there have been, there have been a few other things that came up that I, that I want to deal with first before I get there. Uh, which is to say, next week I'm probably going to be talking about doing split screen because a couple of people asked me about split screen. Split screen is fun. Like the uh, like the skybox thing from last time, that's something that I didn't really even think about doing until someone mentioned it. So if you're one of those people, look forward to that. If if, you, if anyone else has any other suggestions, uh, let me know. And I'll, uh, I'll look into them. So, my name is Dragonite. This has been... I feel like I should, like, end the video on a on a with the game open so that you can see what it looks like at the end of the video. Uh, this has been some more advanced things you can do with vertex buffers. I really like vertex buffers, in case you can't tell. Uh, my name is Dragonite. I don't have a Patreon or anything, but if you're feeling generous and if you found this to be helpful, uh, there's a donation link down below. 
If you want the code, there is a link to that down below as well to the GitHub repository. Next time, like I said, split screen. Hope you can all get excited about that, and I will see you all later.